Okay, um, welcome to PKI for Mere Mortals. Um, we're going to be talking through a bunch of stuff. Um, we're going to have a brief introduction, going to go through what certificates are. I think that's going to probably be a little bit uh, low level, but uh, that's okay. Um, going to talk about why we want them or need them, generating your own certificates using Let's Encrypt, and automating Let's Encrypt with Universal Dashboard. And then we'll have a little bit of questions. But of course, if you do have a question, please just stick your hand up and uh, we'll chat about it. So, first up, who are we? Uh, I'm James Ruskin. This is Stevie. You probably know him. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. That slides a lot. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we both work at Chocolatey Software. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're having a good time. Uh, and yeah, if I do get a little bit too excited, please just slow me down. Uh, so, what are certificates? Uh, they are unique blobs of data with private and public components. They're used to encrypt and sign data. Um, and you can use them for validation of that. Uh, they're often signed first up by somebody else who's trusted, and you can then use that to ensure that you've got uh, a chain of trust, essentially, to well, there's the phrase, um, to whoever you, you care about. And of course, you can add uh, certificates to trust to Windows and other operating systems uh, in order to control your, uh, your risk. Which, of course, leads to the joy of uh, having controlled VMs and the like to generate certificates and then use for signing stuff. Um, what are we using for? Uh, we, as I said, we, we can verify identity of people, um, servers, code. Uh, we use it to sign code and software, um, sign commits and messages, emails, for example. Um, and we can prove that these things were made by the person they say they were, or at least somebody who's nicked the key. Um, you can also secure traffic between endpoints, uh, so for example, users and websites, APIs, etc. Uh, these days, Chrome, Firefox, and other browsers um, are making more and more of a deal about ensuring you have both a certificate that looks trusted uh, and that you're signing your traffic and using HTTPS. Excuse me. So, in a world like that, where we are starting to emphasize that we want to use HTTPS for everything, and we still want to spin up random things to play with, um, what can we do? Well, Let's Encrypt is great. Um, they've been around since about 2014, and allow you to, any anybody, to secure a certificate for domains they own. Um, and how can we make that fun? <laughs> Using PowerShell, of course, and I've written a note to do jazz hands. So please bear with me. Um, I was going to ask you to do it, but yeah. So, keeping the slides really short this time, demos. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I'll try and keep more centered. So. We have some demos. Um, so we can start out by creating a self-signed certificate, um, which is obviously very simple, very quick, and easy. Is this big enough and clear enough for everybody? Fantastic, thank you. So really basic. Uh, we're just going to create a quick certificate for test testselfsigned.cho.co um, and create that self-signed certificate there. So we now got our certificate uh, created within my certificate, uh, my current user in this case, because I'm not elevated. And we can see that we've got a certificate object back out of that. If we want, we can export that as a PFX file, which can then be used in general for importing to stuff like Nexus, uh, any website or, or anything you want. And of course, sorry, if you're wanting to use this for other things that... Sorry. Yeah, you can, you can use that for just about anything uh, that you want to. Obviously, if you do want to uh, use it for specific tasks, you'll need to play with the various parameters uh, in order to use it for code signing and the like. Uh, we do have, hopefully, a way to... Hey, what modules are the, those commands in? That is... It's, 
in Windows, I believe. See? Uh, they're built in, uh, I can't remember the name of the module off the top of my head, though. Microsoft or something? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. PKI. Yeah, PKI. Okay. Well, so is that just built for NSR as well? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, so, let's just see if I can get that out in this case. Oh, sorry, I got it. Yeah, you are correct. Let's just ignore that then. Cool. So yeah, so we can we can get that out. We can have a certificate that we uh, want to use, and we can even inspect uh, both the certificate and here we can see that we've got our self-signed certificate, but it's not actually trusted. Um, in this case, it's because we haven't used any kind of certificate that's in our trusted root certificates store. Um, so how do we get past that? We can use something like Let's Encrypt, as I said. Uh, which is, rejoice. sorry? Home lab rejoice. Yeah. Uh, so this is much more complex in this case. Obviously, as I said, there are many arguments to be used with the various uh, self sign cert commandlets, but this is, we're, we're gonna use Cloudflare in this case. There's a whole bunch of plugins uh, you can actually use. Uh, if, <laughs> so we've got the documentation for Posh Acme here, which is the module we're gonna be using. Um, to interact with Let's Encrypt. Um, and they have, as, as I said, uh, many, many plugins for different DNS providers and the like. Uh, but we're going to use Cloudflare because that's what we're using. Um, takes a few minutes because it goes and creates records using our token, uh, checks it, um, and then um, accepts the request. So we'll kick that off and we'll just go into a different shell. Correct. And that is creating the DNS record in Cloudflare? Yeah, it's automatic. For the authoritative? Yeah. Sorry. So the question there was that uh, to check that I was using uh, both Posh Acme and the Cloudflare plugin for Posh Acme in order to go and create the DNS record automatically. So there's various ways you can use Let's Encrypt to generate a certificate, um, both using HTTP, HTTPS requests, um, the DNS records. So you'll go and create a text record that has the appropriate. Um, authentication in it, and then it'll go and verify that you do, you can do that, so you probably own the domain. Does that also mean Cloudflare is your DNS register? Yes. For this domain, at least. And all the, the plugins are included with Pocket Acme, right? They're just all baked Yeah. Uh, and you can actually, they're, they're all available on GitHub as well, so you can just go and look at them, and uh, it, it's quite fun reading. I, again, shouldn't use the term fun. Um, so anyway, uh, that's probably actually now no, not quite finished. There's a, a built-in timeout of, I think, two minutes. Uh, so this does just take a moment. But uh, I'm going to cheat and just pop this in. Although I did make it earlier, it does work. So we can see... <laughs> I'm doing well today, I'm very sorry guys. Um, uh -uh. Um, yeah. So here's one I made earlier that isn't the one I just mentioned. Uh, and we can see then that we do have a lovely cert object that has a bunch of properties. So expanding that. actually fewer properties than I expected. Well, let's just grab the other one then, because we're back. There we go. So we can see uh, we've got a not after time that is pretty close by. 
um, relatively speaking. Um, this is because Let's Encrypt in, uh, suggests that you rotate your certificates quite often um, because it's so easy to just go and get another one uh, instead of having a year or more where you might leak the certificate and then find that you need to revoke it. Um, but it's generated all of these files. We can go and have a look at those, but you know, you've got your full chain file which has every certificate up the, tr uh, the uh, trust chain, um, PFXs, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, so you can just grab that. Question. Yep. I can see in that property where the cert file is for posh hacking. Where does the new um, certificate drop its files? The new, oh, the, uh, the self-signed certificate drops its files directly into um, your certificate store uh, or wherever you have told it to do so. Um, you can then export it as a PFX file, but you'll have to choose a path at that point. Uh, there's no default location there. Uh, and sorry, the question, I'm trying to get better at this repeating yes. thing. Uh, the question there was, uh, when you're using the new self-signed cert, um, does it drop a file anywhere on your disk? Uh, and the answer is no, not by default. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and we can see all the files here. And the nice thing about this, if this works, is we can then go have a look at our export a certificate and see that, yeah, it is, it is actually trusted. It's the def one of the default certificates in the trusted root certificate store is something that uh, Let's Encrypt is using, which is great. So that's how you do it if you're doing it manually. Um, we want to talk about making it fun, doing it with a dashboard or something along those lines. So I'll pass over to Stevie to show some interesting stuff with dashboard. Awesome. Quick show of hands, how many people hate PKI? Because I hate it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's no fun. No fun, but let's make it a little bit more fun. Um, and just so you all are aware, um, if you go to this plugin section of the Posh Acme Docs, here's all of the supported plugins that, that you can use. So it's pretty, pretty advanced, um, no matter which, pretty much if, you're using something for DNS that's in this list. Um, and he accepts pull requests for anything that's not in that list. Uh, so it's relatively easy um, to generate those, those certificates using those plugins. Um, so I've got a PowerShell Universal instance. Uh, it's running in Azure uh, on an Azure VM um, at pki.ch0.co. Um, and I've got a bunch of stuff going on inside of here because I wanted to show you all kind of a bunch of different ways that you can solve this problem and make it easier on yourselves. Um, give you some tools that you can empower other people to just do PKI themselves so you don't have to. We'll start by looking at some pages. And pages are really, really powerful features uh, inside of PowerShell Universal. They allow you to kind of drag and drop components onto the thing or onto the pane and then, yeah. You want to just introduce PowerShell Universal in case people don't. Yeah, so PowerShell Universal, for those who don't know, uh, Adam Driscoll, who is floating around the conference here and had a session earlier, uh, is the creator of this thing. It's really cool and really powerful. So you can do dashboards, you can do pages, you can do automation, which is scripts and jobs. So you can have scripts that run uh, on schedules or via triggers or whatever. Uh, and you can also generate your own APIs as well via endpoints. So if you need to create a RESTful API service to do something, all of that is supported inside of the single platform and they can all tie together, which is super nice, super great. Uh, and that's actually what some of this stuff that we'll walk through does. Um, but back to a page, I've put, if you click edit here and go to toolbox, um, you can drop charts, you can do data displays, you can do data inputs, and you can do typography um, inside of pages right now. That's not all of the stuff you can do with Universal, that's just the stuff that's drag and droppable into a page right now. If you need other stuff, use a dashboard. But all I've done is dropped a form on here and then told the form what to be. So if we were to create another form here, you can come down here, 
you can resize it if you want to, and then you can click this button and start filling it out. So you say, hey, for this particular form, when somebody submits it, I want to run this API, or I want to send the data to this API, or I want to invoke this script. And then you give it the name of a script, et cetera, et cetera. And then the fields, as you fill in these fields, they are the parameters that get passed in either as a body to an API or as the parameter block of whatever script uh, you have on the back end. And we'll, we'll go through that as well. Um, but just to show you what that looks like, you can really quickly generate these forms um, for whatever you need to do. Yes, yeah, you, the pages that are a little bit harder to do the source code with, but you can edit them on the back end because this actually translates into XML um, on the back end so you can export it and send it other places, etc. cetera. Um, but the same way that James just ran a script to generate a certificate, you could fill out a form to do the same thing. So we could say uh, PowerShell Summit dot ch0 we are on ch0 that code right and then we could give it oh this is a funky keyboard I'd like to apologize for British keyboards everywhere UK keyboard and what else do we need um, you can optionally give your own pfx passphrase here or you can leave it blank uh, if you leave it blank, it'll just use the default that Posh Acme uses, which is Posh Acme. So when you import the certificate, uh, it's going to prompt you for a password. It's Posh Acme by default, but you can change it here on this form if you want to. Um, and if you click this nice little auto renew checkbox, what that's going to do is on the back end, it's going to create a scheduled task that runs submit renewal which takes that certificate and automatically renews it for you so you don't have to worry about it ever again. And the scheduled task runs 10 days prior to the expiration date on the certificate. So once you generate it, it's done and you can do it. Do whatever you need to there. Um, depending on the service, you might have more stuff to do, but if your service just relies on the subject name of the certificate and what store it's in in Windows, you're good to go. But if you need to like configure like a Java key store or something like that, you're going to need the thumbprint. So there's going to be more work for you to do. Um, but there's some tools in here that, that will show you that can help you do that as well. So we're going to click save on this and just let that kind of do its thing. And if we go back over here to jobs, this will run. Um, did that one actually light up? Let me see. I don't see the job actually kicked off. Oh, you know what? I moved it. That form does nothing. That was just to be an example. It's this one. Same thing in a universal dashboard. And you can see there's, there's navigation over here on the left, so you can do uh, different things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this home page is kind of cool, too. Uh, this automatically pulls in all the Let's Encrypt certificates that you've generated. Uh, on this, this system, and I've kind of poked some holes into the Posh Acme module to allow this to work within PowerShell Universal. Um, I don't think I'll be able to show it all that well because this VM doesn't explode very well, but if we blow it up just a little bit, uh, maybes, maybes, um, yeah. So the C program data Posh Acme folder, I know it's super, super small, but believe me, when you go into this LE prod directory, all of the orders are in here. So all of the certificates um, live and breathe in this directory. Um, I've moved it. There's an environment variable that you can set with Posh Acme. It's like env posh acme underscore home i believe is what it's called and then you can give it an alternate path because otherwise it lives in the user directory yes uh maybe <laughs> Blow that up. Oh, there you go yeah so that's in c program data posh acme le prod and 
then this is like my account number um, for the Let's Encrypt servers. And then all of the certs live inside of here, inside of this drive. Yeah. Beautiful. <coughs> yes, it is. Yep. Yeah, so that's, that's how I've kind of made Posh Acme work so that no matter who logs into this dashboard, can see all of the certificates and you can do all of the stuff um, that you need to do. Uh, I've also wired it up so that if you have a certificate on this page and it's not set to auto renew, we'll say we pick on this PKI one. Actually, I don't want to touch that one. That's probably not a great idea to do that while we're using it. Um, this one here, we'll use test two. So if I were to renew this selected certificate, uh, what that does on the back end is it submits a renewal job and in a few minutes when we refresh this data, this date right here will change to 90 days out um, from where it is. Uh, and I think it will auto refresh at some point as well, but things do take a while with, with Less Than Encrypt because it has to generate those records and those challenges and do all the, the validation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it is possible um, to automate all this stuff, which is really great. <coughs> So let's do let's do a new one. So we'll do summit. Yeah, okay, I can't tab. Right the end. Oh, ho, 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 ho. these shift keys are so small. Certificate. This one's kind of fun. 
Uh, inside, inside of power shuttle universal, universal, there's this concept of a stepper, which you can add as many steps as you want, and then, and then there, there can, be can be validation in between each step. So, so for this, this particular example, um, you, can you can give it like, it like a website name. So, so you can see how .co, for example. So next, what's the website name? So just call it fancy, fancy app. Type on this keyboard. One more. And then what certificate do I want to use? And then it's giving me a text or a select box of all the certificates that select the code is generated for me that aren't expired. And then I can select whichever one I want to do that. And then I click finish and then it goes off and it throws an error because the version of it is broken because it's a single machine on a domain. Um, but, it but it invoke commands and does the IIS thing. But if you look at the IIS thing, it actually, I've already done it. Password is a secure string. Um, 
parameter there, it, it all accepts the secure string. string. So, you so you don't have to do any more work because that property is already a secure string. string. Right? So you can just pass it directly in. So it's, so it's very high pipelineable. And things like that. Super, super nice. nice. I like it very much. So when you go back into your Cloudflare cloud instance and look at your DNS, those challenges, challenges aren't there. They've, they've been cleaned up for you automatically. They're just, just created long enough to do the challenge, and then, and then they go away. And there, and there are, are two, two different environments for Let's Encrypt. Very, very important to mention this one because they may limit you. Um, because it is for a right? Let's Encrypt free, free thing. Um, they are, they are trusted as a certificate, so it's great that they provide it for a free service, but free, free they, don't they don't want you to abuse, abuse it. it. So it's like, I think five failed attempts at validation, validation in an hour, the rate limit you, and it's like 300 red certificates per domain in a week or something, or something like that. that. Like, like, it's not bad in terms, in terms of rate limits. limits. Like, unless, unless your script is horribly broken and your automation is just running it over and over and over again, you're probably never going to hit the rate limits. But they do have a staging environment. It is, it is much, much more flexible, flexible and the rate, rate limits are way, way higher, higher, almost, almost non-existent. Um, and, and you can control what, what environment you are on by running, by running set, the set, uh, set, set uh, no, LE server. Yes, yes, set, set server. server. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, set set server. server, and then you can, you can have, have uh, LE underscore. Prod and underscore stage, so underscore stage and then prod as well. So you can switch, switch which one you're talking, talking to, but, but it sticks there. there. So, so once you run that, you're, you're, you're using, using a staging environment, staging environment and so you switch it to prod, or, or using prod, prod until so you switch it to stage. So just, so just be cognizant of that, that as well. So if you're, so if you're writing code, code or, something or something like that, like that be, be descriptive. You can, you can put that in the code so you can do the right, right thing. Um, and then, and then the account information, information stuff, stuff is different as well. As well. So, if so if you accept accepted the TOS and you've got an account record created in a staging environment, but you haven't done so in prod, but your code doesn't accept the TOS and all of that good stuff, it's going, it's going to, to fail, fail until you add, add that, that parameter. Um, um, so just, so just little, 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 little tweaks, tweaks and stuff, and stuff. but if you but follow the documentation, the documentation uh, for creating your first certificate and just stick to that, that you're, going you're going to be just fine. fine. That's, that's that boilerplate code, code is really, really all you're going to need uh, to 
uh, to start generating lots of crypt certificates, unless you need to do fancy things like have multiple SANs attached to the certificate, etc. You might wildcard it and be fine, or you might have, you know, this, this certificate's good for mobile.myworld.com and whatever other service dot my um, so, you so you can you can, you can control, control all that stuff with the APA certificate as well. But it's, but it's super flexible. flexible. It's, it's, he's, he's done, done a, ton a ton of work inside, inside of this module, module to kind of get out, get out of the way and just, and just let you work, work and generate so you can get someone on. Um, super, super nice. nice. Generating certificates for this thing, and all, and all of a sudden, sudden I was like, I can generate, generate this certificate anymore. Why? And, and I found out that it was rate limit, it's red, 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 and I'm like, well, I'm done with this part for five days because I can't do anything about it. But you could, you could, yeah, yeah, you could just get a wild card and you're fine, but I am not that smart. Uh, yeah, yeah. Future, future Stevie, Stevie was, was kicking, kicking present, present Stevie for, for not just, not just wild carding it. Yeah, you can be very prescriptive. Instead of using the LA prod or LA stage that comes, that comes with the Posh Act module, module. If, you if you have a server in house that talks the Act protocol, 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 you can provide that to, to, to the functions. And it'll, and it'll just send that request to your Act server as well. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of like something, something really, really cool, 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 cool that we can build really fast at a page. That would be cool. Because this stuff is amazing, and I love it. Yeah, you can, you can get started with this stuff for free, too. Like, like, I think you can run a dashboard. I don't know how many pages you can run with a free license, but I think it's like one or two. And then up to 25 jobs a day. So. If you, just if you just need to generate, generate a certificate every once in a while, in a while the, the, the free version is fine. Um, if, you if you want to pay for it, which I highly recommend because it unlocks everything, um, but you get like authentication and stuff like that behind the scenes too. Uh, so it'll tie into Azure Active Directory or Active Directory or anything like that as well. Um, so you can create different roles and things like that so that Anybody or a brother can land on a page, page, page that generates a lot of tech so they get and get, get a certificate back. back. Um, that, would that would probably not be, not be the greatest, greatest thing to do. If I had to think, think about, about it. it. I think I'd like that very much. Oh, and APIs, you can use the API thing for free as many as you want. There's no limits to the API thing for the person that is worth mentioning so if, so if you do need to have at least something, something for the API, API endpoints you can do that as well. Super super, super nice. Super nice. Um, anybody anybody want to see, see anything or questions? questions? Demos, Demos kind, kind of fall apart a little bit. A little bit.
minutes. Yeah, we got a few minutes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's not so much as it touches the, the, the cert score as, as it is. I made it run as the same system user that the PowerShell Universal Service was running as, just because it was easier for me to do it that way in Universal. Um, it, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say that it ran a system, but for the sake, sake, sake of this, you can tell it to run a system. system. Run a system. But, but because, because PowerShell Universal has, has the concept of secrets inside, inside of it, you could build, build a credential object and pass a credential object to the service as well, or to the schedule job, so you can say, hey, run a system here, and it can do its thing.